Hi and welcome to something for the weekend or if you're watching a recorded version later on don't worry it's still relevant to you. We've got lots of activities to join in with from home and lots of recommendations for things you can do free online over the week ahead. I'm Jude Gosling also known as Jude 90. I'm the artistic director of Together 2012 who are bringing you this live stream today. With me, where she's been locked down for over 12 months, is our chair, the artist Julie Newman. We're both dressed up to go out to stay in as usual, so we're going to come back to East London in a minute for some audio description and some dressing up to go out to stay in updates as well. A word of warning, the internet is very spotty at the moment, we suspect, because of G7 and also the fastly outage earlier in the week. So do bear with us. But first, let me go to the other end of our long virtual wheeled sofa, all the way to the West Midlands, and some introductions, audio description. And there's only one of you today. Uh, absolutely. So welcome from Sutton Coalfield. Not that you can see my hands, but I can do this today on my on my end of the virtual wheeled sofa. Unfortunately, Tracy is uh, a little bit off colour and didn't feel able to stay vertical. So, um, yeah, um, I, you've just, I'm going to have to fill in, hopefully adequately. So here I am in the West Midlands. You'll be pleased to know that I've resumed um, use of the uh, beautiful theatre-like backdrop we now have re-enabled. Hopefully, it my my attaching it to the roof is secure, more secure than the original last time. Um, so I that, that so we're still in the studio room, uh, and I today I have got nicely uh, groomed silvery white hair. Um, I got blue eyes behind no framed black armed glasses, uh, freshly shaven as well. I'm not quite. I had an interview this morning. That's why. Um, and I am wearing a uh, black polo shirt but over the top of that i'm wearing a blue uh it, well it's a denim jacket but with sweatshirt arms and sweatshirt hood in a much darker blue and it's a very comfy jacket and what are you dressed up to go out to stay in to do uh, i am dressed up to stay out to no one of those things um to go to the turkey italy football match this evening with um my bear who you'll meet again later, um, who is the Turkish football bear from the 20, 2002 World Cup. But obviously, Turkey opening match of the Euros going to be with me to support. I'll allow that. And if you want any more details on the Euros, look up our webpage highlights and links under the main Together 2012 pull down menu and you'll have all of the links there. Today, by about six o'clock, all of the videos, images, poems and links from today will be up on that same website page. So go to our website www.together2012.org.uk Go to the Together 2012 TV menu and you'll find lots more options as well. Or just click on the main TV page and there's a link through to the highlights there too. Julie, who are you? What do you look like and what are you dressed up to go out to stay in to do? Hi, I'm Julie Newman. I'm the chair of Together 2012. Um, I'm dressed up. Uh, oh, I'll give you audio description of my dressing up first. I have a straw boater with a rainbow, um, what do you call it, trim? Hat band? Hat band, yes. Uh, bring it down again. Uh, <laughs> I'm wearing dark rim glasses. Uh, I have a, a sort of onyxy save the whale business. Um, and I have... A, you mean a necklace? Necklace, <laughs> yes, thank you. I have a um, an navy blue shirt with boats on it, and I'm dressed up to go down to Cornwall um, to the G7 where I should be doing a protest and saying, remember about us uh, when you're doing the decisions and the agreements for international aid for the various vaccines and uh, Refugee Week and things. Remember about us as disabled people. And if you'd like to add your words to that, there's 
quite a number of ways that you can contact the government on social media and I believe there's also quite a number of protest pages up there. So in a sort of moving from what I can see in a peculiarly jerky fashion due to, I think, said G7 internet, I have a hen well, a self-styled hennard corona crop under a light grey baseball cap. I've got green eyes behind black plastic glasses. I've got pale olive skin, silver coloured jewellery. And I'm wearing a kind of orangey yellow T-shirt that says on it, we've only just begun with a heart. Um, I've also got black wrist braces. And some of the jewellery is sort of daisy themed. So I have a daisy themed pendant and two of my four earrings studs are are daisy themed and I'm dressed up to go out to stay in to go out tonight in fact at seven o'clock to the Elsie J Oxenham Appreciation Society's biannual general meeting. They usually hold these meetings in Somerset every two years and I've never had the resources to get there so I'm absolutely thrilled to be going. And I particularly wanted to flag that up to say if you're one of the women from every age and culture and faith group who collects secretly girls' school stories, there are some wonderful online communities that you can join. So I'm going to stick the... Um, Robin's looking completely kind of bewildered. So I'm going to stick the links to some of those up on the highlights and links page later in case you are one of the people who also enjoy reading children's books for girls written in the last century. Also in our view, you can see behind us our graffiti banner. It, you can only see a little bit of it. You can see the whole thing on the website. It says Together 2012 in graffiti. And it also has images on it of some of the art forms we cover in the course of a year from drama, dance, street art, carnival art, photography, filmmaking, poetry, art, craft, and lots more. And we're going to be getting on to those in a minute. We've also behind us got a teddy bear. We'll be coming back to that in the second half of the show when, as always, we will be running the Clockwork Paralympics to see whose teddy bear gets to wear a medal for the following week. But first, Judy, let's have a report from this week's Pop-Up Poetry Club. That takes place on a Wednesday morning from 10.30 to 12 by phone. We phone you and we pay for all of the costs. So how did that go? It was good. We had some technical glitches, which were not good. Um, but Alison Marchant, who's our program leader, picked it up. Um, and spoke to people individually and supported everybody individually who would was planning to take part. Um, so we managed to get some poems on the theme of nature this week. Just to say before I forget, next week's theme is the night sky. The night sky. So if you'd like to join in from home, we'd love to see your poems on the night sky. But the main thing is have a go at writing one. So... This week's theme of nature, can I ask you to start with your own poem, Julie? Um, could I not start with Pizer's because mine's at the bottom? Or you could start with <laughs> Pizer Malik Neves. That's, that's it. Um, sorry, it's because I've got a little pile on my lap and I didn't want to lose them. Um, this is Pizer's, which she sent in. Um, it's, I'm sorry, I just got to get the pages separated off i don't know what the weather's like where you are but yeah. in london it is tropical already it, it is it is i think the summer hat is is very um, appropriate uh this is from pizer one morning i woke up late just had a cup of tea and moroccan date it's my natural habit to sit sorry to take some more rest and sit keep gazing through the window after making the bed and spread the throw, I hear my neighbour begin gardening with a pail of water and pouring over the rose plants next to the jasmine. Typical of roses, always running away from others and stay alone like dogs who always prefer bone instead of meat before the walk. 
similar to us when eating, never talk. It's the nature or character of ivy, loves to crawl along the wall, looking pretty. Heavy pumpkin stays down among its leaves as skylark enjoys the breeze. It's human nature to go with emotion, get frustrated when cannot find solution. Stay in solitude and brood, stop smiling when in bad mood. Just as dark, heavy clouds stop moving, and soon it's raining, eyes full of tears. If you feel the fears of being alone and gloomy, start singing and be merry. These are characters of nature, murmured my neighbour. Oh, thank you, Paisa. That was terrific. terrific. This is Crystal Pease's poem on nature. Nature is everywhere. Nature is everywhere you go. Everything that lives and grows is nature. Animals, big and small. Nature is plants that go tall. Nature is beautiful in every way. Beautiful and exciting and needs our care. So listen and learn and do your bit to keep nature beautiful forever. You can buy plants and grow for yourself many different coloured plants. are beautiful and you can look after them. They can live so long. I like to grow differently coloured flowers. Thank you, Crystal. Robin, what have you got for us first? Okay, I'm going to start with one from Glory Sengo, which is entitled Nature. You see the squirrels, birds, and the pigeons in the park. They're picking up their food on the ground and beg for more. The birds are flying on the people's toes and sit on people's lap and fly on their heads and go away. The squirrels are eating the food and they run up the trees. Good. Do you know that? Yeah, thank you, Glory. And that really reminds me, it's a bit like a different world, but several years ago, I think 2017, we had a month's residency in Memorial Park, West Ham, and we held all of our clubs there, most of them outside, and many's the morning we sat there painting or writing poetry, watching the squirrels run up the trees, and our assistance dogs going mad trained because they couldn't do anything about it. So they thought they were very strange cats because we've got very urban dogs. They hadn't really met squirrels before. So, Judy, what do you have for us next? I have a poem from Dawn Barber, again called Nature. Beautiful coloured flowers and their smells, the sound of the birds whistling in the trees, butterflies flying everywhere the sound of running water. I wish I could keep this scene in a book and look at it every day. Nature's a wonderful thing. Oh, thank you, Dawn. This is from Alison March, and Alison is an international installation artist and also, well, we all work part-time, works part-time leading our clubs programme. So this is Nature in the Seasons by Alison Marchant. Flowers, fresh and fragrant, inside in bleak midwinter. The wind blows from the sea to the hills and wood. By lakes and sandy shores, beneath the clouds, frost hangs up in icicles, quietly shining to the moon. Winter nights enlarge the number of hours, a perfect weight of snow on tree boughs. Red ploughed fields where larks nest in hedgerows, the blackbird fit flits from tree to tree. Pink wild roses and the bubbling sound of a brook on the sweep of curving hills sucked up from the sea. The rain blasts a simple passage of weak notes from the black branches, webbed and weaved by tiny spiders in the flat blue mist of the sun. Dragonflies and spotted butterflies fly around the forest pond in threads of crimson hue across the sun-peppered meadow. Of dandelion clocks and cow parsley where birds are singing and herds stand in field ponds and ivy flowers where the busy bee ponders on summer scents of unquiet days. Thank you, Alison. That was great. What have you got for us next yeah, uh, this one is from Dwayne, Dwayne Bryan, again, called Nature. Nature is all around us, 
from the trees to the leaves to the humming of the bees we have land sea and air which we should we which we all should care when the sun shines it can be really hot when the moon shines the darkness is what we've got you can see the stars at night you can see a rainbow when it's bright that's a really good note to end on, Dwayne. Thank you for that. And Julie, I think last but no, by no means least, we've got your poem. Yeah, I, I changed the title. I thought, <laughs> I thought there were going to be too many natures. So mine is called I Remember the Wind. I remember the smell of the wind blowing air fresh from the ocean, the memory of open water, the sails snatching at the breeze, catching my heart, pushing us forward. I remember the smell of the wind, blowing air, fresh from the forest, the memory of the leaves and trees rustling and moving in the breeze, the scent of pine, the sound of freedom. I remember the smell of the wind, blowing air, fresh from the heathland, the memory of insects buzzing as they hover, then fly away. Bracken pungent, birds calling from high. I remember the smell of the wind, blowing air ahead of the storm, the memory of the rain falling, softly at first hitting the ground, then petrichor, the clean smell of earth. I remember the smell of the wind, blowing memories, smells still fresh as I watch through the window pane. The leaves moving with the breeze, gentle zephyrs capture my memories. Oh, thank you, Judy. And I think everybody who's not been able to get into nature in the last 18 months can relate to that. Obviously, there's lots of people like ourselves who are shielding. But I think, you know, everybody's movements have been so restricted. And indeed, you know, for people in the health service and other key workers, they simply haven't had time anyway. So I thought that was lovely and oh, um, very thought provoking as well. If you'd like to join the pop up poetry club you can find out more on our website www.together2012.org.uk you can also just drop us an email to info at together2012.org.uk and somebody called Noel Guinan who's our engagement support worker will be in touch to take you through the system and get your phone number and welcome to the club. But otherwise, if you do join in from home, we would love to see your poems. You can drop those to the same email address, info at together2012.org.uk. Now we're going to move on to this morning when Alison runs a still life session on Zoom between 11 and 12. That's quite a mindful session. We can send you the image Alison's screen shares on zoom but we could also text or email you the image if that's easier and again we put that image up on the highlights and links page so you're able to join in from home so i'm going to pop up this one this week's image and get robin to do some audio description it's uh, a, a plain white background and then we have i mean a handbag but i would describe it when people think of handbag, it, it, an expansive kind of very um, characteristic thing full of character. That's what this bag is. Um, it's it is a it's got basically a brown leather bag, um, but with loads and loads of kind of foresty coloured things on it. It looks quite kind of yeah greens and um, and flowery. Um, stuff you know I'd, I'd, I'd think of it as it looks like a gardener's handbag <laughs> if there is such a thing um not sure what it's made of but then um the handles has got like a silver uh kind of link chain um pattern around the handle with stitching on the back side of it um and then it's it's arced it's it's, it's kind of like a um uh yeah it's curved across the top with this lovely kind of um greeny uh um oldie style kind of greeny band lace um with gold trimming on it i mean very fine and then in the middle is is a silver and gold uh rose Yes, yeah, so this is Glory Sengo and Glory's drawn this in i think it's some 
I think it's coloured pencil actually, rather than felt tip. And Gloria's done that in shades of brown and green. This is Ellen Goody. Ellen has had two different goes. She's using felt tips in browns, greens, yellows, and reds. And then this is Crystal Peasy. Crystal's painted hers and she's done two. So this first one is in shades of red, blue and black. And there's another one, you know, really great that you managed to do two crystal. Again, browns, reds, blacks, but actually looking very different. So I'm going to try taking those off again. We will now move on and have a look at what the art club's been up to earlier in the week. So on a Tuesday from 11 to 12, Alison runs a Make and Natter session. And that's really the most sociable of all of our clubs. So the idea with Make and Natter is you can either bring your own project that you're already working on or you can do something that Alison is teaching. So I'm just going to show you in terms of make and natter this is duncan can you remind me of duncan's surname bridgestock brilliant so this is duncan bridgestock and we've seen some of duncan bridgestock's mo montages before so i'm going to pop this up and just show you what he's doing and get robin to audio describe okay so uh what we've got here is a i guess an a4 piece of paper um and then various shapes with red so it's a scarlet and cream lines on what I was said was a pale blue background and they've been cut into lots of different right angle shapes shapes like L's so lots of different sized L's and they've been placed on the page oh, sorry Robin did that too quickly That's okay um, and they've been placed on the page and it, it looks like a sort of maze but, but like a digital maze, something you'd see in Tron if you ever watched that film. <laughs> right, so this is the next one. Okay, well, that's this one. Oh, so this one we, we've got, um, it's in sort of in two halves, really. One half is very black um, with orange. I'm not sure if it's got orange shapes cut out in there, but again, it, it's, it seems to be about the shape and the space that the shapes leave. Um, so it's almost as if the black was put over the orange rather than the other way around. Um, and there's, there's, there's not a specific pattern to the shapes. And then matched on the other side um, with, it looks like a combination. It says a, pi a, a picture of the daffodil with the letters C and A. Um, and then what looks like a, a battery pack or something like that. But it's, I mean, it's a very interesting collection of shapes, but I'm not entirely sure to be honest, what it represents, if anything. Yeah, I mean, they're certainly very abstract. One of the things I love about this is Duncan is doing all of this with recycled card and cardboard, including, I know, in some of the ones he's shown us previously, old medication packets. So finally from Duncan. Oh, and again, I mean, again, we've got a, a series of shapes. So we've got a yellow background and then another series of, of L's, but this time in pink and yellow. Um, and this looks like a Pac-Man game. If anybody remembers Pac-Man, so it's got it's got a series. There's black, um, four black dots within the kind of uh, lanes created by the shapes, as if they would be looking for each other or chasing each other around. It's really interesting. Thanks, Robin. Anyway, <laughs> back to Tuesday's Make and Natter. I've just got some final images to show you. So these are from Crystal Peasy, and Crystal's continued with a craft that Tracy, who usually does a join in with Tracy activity on a Friday, started a few weeks ago. And it's just purely about taking an old toilet roll, pinching what the top together to create ears, and then turning it into an animal. And what Crystal's done this time is take it a bit further, and she's used paper to then wrap the toilet rolls to create different colours and different designs. And then Ellen Goody has been working to follow the folding exercise. It's called quilling, isn't it, Julie, that we looked at last week. And with the quilling, what people are doing is rolling up paper and then pushing it into a shape. So this is Sophia's final version. And what Sophia has done is created a heart shape. 
and stuck it onto a piece of paper or card and then filled it with the rolled up paper. So if I just go back a moment to Ellen, these rolled up pieces of paper will eventually end up looking like this. Thank you very much, Sophia. Sorry, did you want to say something about that, Julie? I think it looks great. I'm always so impressed at, uh, at people's interpretation. You know, everybody's got their own style, haven't they? Well, that's right. And we never try to do something to a pattern. Everything we do is about making something that's unique to you, but taking some of these kind of really basic templates and moving on, as we don't have join in with Tracy, today we have join in with Ju. And I, here I am holding, or rather I'm passing to Julie to hold, but not to shake anymore, I don't think. And what Julie is doing is she's holding a percussion shaker that is made from an old two-pint milk bottle with a handle. It's well. I'll now tell you how to make it yourself. But it's the very first thing that we've done as part of this summer's kitchen carnival project. Usually we run a carnival project right through the summer and then take part in a carnival, either Newham Carnival or the last few years Hackney Carnival. This year, again, there are no carnivals, but Hackney Carnival is going online and we're creating a project as part of that. And the kitchen carnival is based on the fact that everything you make comes out of your kitchen. So I'm just going to pop up a few photos of me making this online. So this is just me demonstrating the original bottle and showing that if you hold it from the bottom, it's much noisier than the other way around. I don't know why, but Robin could probably tell us. So the other thing you need to do it is any old plastic pot that you've run out of. Some, funnily enough, we seem to have a lot of old ice cream tubs. A pair of scissors, some felt tip pe pens if you want to decorate it, but you don't have to decorate it to play it. And similarly, just from a health and safety perspective, you may want to have a bit of super glue. So the first thing to do is just to rinse out the milk bottle, make sure you've got all the old milk out and also the label off. Decorate it with felt tips if you want to. I just doodled on this, as you can probably tell, but you could create a design. In fact, you could even plan out a design beforehand. Then I cut up what I did because this is quite a sort of awkwardly shaped tub. It's almost like an old threepenny piece was I cut into the top and then cut round it so that you've got plenty of little bits of small plastic. And then I took this plastic and just put a few into the top of the bottle at a time. And that's really important because it will make a completely different sound according to how many bits of plastic you put in. So that is really down to you to experiment. If you're concerned that somebody in the household is likely to take the top off and put the plastic in their mouths, then do put a bit of super glue on the lid before you put the lid back on. Otherwise you can just screw it up and Julie, do you want to just give us a shake? So we're also going to be bringing you kitchen carnival guiros and percussion pan drums in the very near future and also then moving on to costume making. So watch out on all of our media channels for more news about the kitchen carnival. So now I'd like to move on. Yes. We've got the teddy bears and the clockwork Paralympics and lots of recommendations for the week ahead coming up. But to close the first half of the show, I have Stara Plurger with one of her join in with Stara films. And I'm delighted to say that Stara is 30 today. She'd love to be having a big party, but in fact, she's still stuck in a barn in the middle of wood with her friend and collaborator and PA Hannah Facey who filmed this film for us so we'd all like to say a really big happy birthday Stara and we hope there'll be a huge party next year. Uh, hi I made a painting saying oh, okay hi it was for the act up 
film. I want to show you how I painted it. Bye. It was good. Bye. How brilliantly simple that picture was. I mean, it's so effective. Would you mind just doing the audio description for us, Robin? Of course I will. Um, so uh, Stara started with a piece of, of card um, and she used some masking tape, which is a kind of white sticky tape, um, stuck and, and created the letters OK on the page. She then got red and blue um, poster paints and kind of really spread them all over in a mix um, onto the page, waited for that to dry and then pulled off the, uh, the masking tape. So you kind of, you've got the let the okay letters really, really sticking out, um, with all the color surrounding it. And it's really good. We're kind of really kind of explosive. Okay. I mean, the, the, the imagery goes with the word as well. Yeah, I love Stara's work and you can find many more of her joining from home with Stara Films on our website. I'm afraid, I don't know if anybody can hear my assistant's dog barking, but there's somebody who was in the strut. Yes, I'm not surprised, but um, no, unfortunately, the Uber from the vet with their medication has missed the message that says we're not going to open the door and seems to have missed the laminated sign on the security gate explaining that we're shielding. But um, I make no judgment about Uber at all. I will simply move on and say it is finally time for our clockwork. Paralympics and after that when we're looking at what's coming up in the next week or two there is a film indeed from ACT UP talking about their new play that's taking place as part of New and Word Festival. So with the Clockwork Paralympics we race clockwork toys to see whose teddy bear gets to wear a medal for the next week. We have our teddy bears on set not just because we're teddy bear lovers, but because ever since March 2020, there has been a virtual bear hunt for children. And there's also been a real one. So if you stick a teddy bear in the window, children who are bear hunting can see it. And if you stick one on the stream, they can see it as well. There's lots of children's activities still haven't started up again. Children are still relying on walks for exercise, so do think about your teddies joining in. So we've met your teddy bear, Robin. Our teddy bear is our, well, I say our usual competitor, my birthday bear from last month, Tanny, which is a golden bear of reasonable size, dressed in sporting gear with red and white sports shoes, a red sporting hairband and a blue top. It's waving a rainbow flag and it has a gold medal around its neck already in felt. So I'm going to put the Paralympics on. There are going to be two swimmers, clockwork crabs, and Robin is going to do the audio description. We're going to go for the right side of the screen. Yes, if you'd like to join in from home, make a choice now. Okay, so here we are in the Olympic bath, ready to go. Oh, and we're going off our flying start, yes. Oh, and it's got to be said that the London competitor has got somewhat lost on the way, and the Birmingham competitor has trounced the uh, the, the, the wayward um London competitor, I'm afraid to say, in this occasion. So I shall award uh, this 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 Turkish bear this week. He's he is a Constantine, um, and he's getting oh awarded um, a gold medal from Orion Swimming Club for his efforts. Isn't that just dandy? Oh, sounds gone again, Jew. 
I think my fingers are literally sticking <laughs> to the keyboard. It's so hot. So anyway, what I was going to say, apart from congratulations, of course, <laughs> is that it's a shame I haven't managed to get, well, maybe I should get our clockwork racing grannies back on the track again. Now we've got Tanny because Tanny Gray Thompson, of course, was the great wheelchair track athlete. You were the great swimming athlete and somehow that seems to be influencing this game of chance. <laughs> so coming up in the weeks ahead, Newham Word Festival launches in just a week's time. It's a fortnightly festival, mostly online this year. So the first thing I want to flag up is a week on Monday, we have a sign poetry workshop from two to four in the afternoon with D.L. Williams. And D.L. Williams is a Bristol-based poet. They're very well known. It's open and it's free, like everything we do, and it's open to anybody who signs as their main form of communication. So that might be deaf people speaking British Sign Language, or it might be people with learning difficulties and nonverbal people who use, use simplified sign systems that are still based on BSL. You can book directly through us at info at together2012.org.uk or you can go to the New and Word Festival website where you will find much more to book via Eventbrite, including this next production, which I'm just going to put a trailer on for, for Act Up Newham. Lucy's going through a rough time. full of mixed emotions in lockdown. Will Lacey be happy again? A doodle journey inside Lucy's mind. Twenty-eighth of June at seven p.m. on Zoom. And I'm very much looking forward to that. The tickets, I think, are limited, so do book sooner rather than later. We'll put that booking link in directly as well as the Newham Word Festival link. What do you recommend for the week ahead, Robin? Uh, the first one I'm going to give you is... Uh, something you, you need to act quickly if it's something you want to go to. Um, it's actually the Squids Club, uh, which is a, an arts club and, and kind of activity stuff um, based in your neck of the woods, actually, isn't it? Um, and it's tonight from seven till nine. Uh, I've, the, the link will be up and it's via Eventbrite. Um, but it's, it's, it's Squids Club welcomes you to the house of do your own. Um, and basically, they've got music, they've got dancing, they've got disco. Um, and there's going to be a performance from Danielle, uh, who, who has her second EP coming out soon. And it looks like a really, really good fun evening aimed at, um, well, I guess everybody, but with a prime audience of people aged 10 to 25 who uh, have learning disabilities or are autistic. Yes, and that's linked to the beautiful Octopus Club, which caters for all ages, and that's the youth-led project. Yeah, we can thoroughly recommend that. Julie, what do you want to recommend? The Royal Academy of Arts has got a virtual um, guide through the summer exhibition, which I'm really looking forward to. Yes, because I think that's very, very new. The Royal Academy Summer Exhibition is an exhibition that anybody can enter. You know, you have to pay, but it, it's a real privilege and an honour to get in. But of course, usually to see it, you've got to go all the way to the Royal Academy in London, including their non-existent blue badge parking in my case. So, yes, that is great. And talking of places where you can't park, but you can access it online, Brighton Fringe Festival is on at the moment, just started this week and is running till the end of the month. 
you can filter the program by the free events and the online events and there's lots and lots of choice in fact too much to recommend so i won't pick one out what else do you recommend robin um i've got one one more um it's called monads and dyads i don't think knowing what that means matters um well i'm sure it does to somebody but not <laughs> um it basically is an exhibition by a, a an artist called julie curtis um, um and it is an exhibition um at the white cube mason's yard which i believe is in bermondsey um so it is a live exhibition and you can go but actually the white cube website has got really some really really good images of the of of the art and also there's um an interview with the artist um and and another couple of there's some other films that if you follow through the website but i i was looking at it, it's absolutely fascinating pictures they're very um detailed but often picking up details that fine art you wouldn't normally look at because fine art often looks at getting it absolutely what the person looks like whereas this is much more about picking up the oddities the in you know the idiosyncrasies the the, the strangeness of people and situations okay, but the we'll color there i think because we've only got another couple of minutes but obviously robin loves that so that's worth looking at if you draw yourself and previous exhibitions have pushed drawing to so that means drawing with paint drawing with with fabric drawing with all sorts of things then the trinity boy drawing trinity boy wolf drawing prize is on deadline for the 17th, which is the middle of next week. There's a small fee to enter, but again, like the Royal Academy exhibition, anybody can enter. And there are prize categories for particular ages and also for students. So we really recommend if you've done a drawing over lockdowns that you're proud of, you know, have a think about entering it for the Trinity Boy Wolf Prize. Julie, I think we've got time for just one more. Um, the Royal Park. Uh, in London have got a virtual exhibition on of the um, the great exhibition of 1852 which took place in Hyde Park I am fascinated by this and really looking forward to it it lasted at the time for about six and a half months um, and it was basically an opportunity for the businesses of the time to showcase their work and and their skills so I'm really looking forward to that and have you got one final one for us, Robin? Uh, only as I mentioned earlier, if if you are into football, um, <laughs> then I shouldn't have asked. Yeah, well, no, nah, but you know, it is it's the opening match of the Euros tonight, um, uh, which is Turkey versus Italy from the Olimpico Stadio uh, in Rome. So, and yes, that's on for the next month for which is great for some and less so for others. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I think there is a definite drawback to not just being able to boot people out to the pub. And um, I'm assuming that the street parties are going to be more riotous oh. than ever. And it's the Queen's birthday tomorrow as well. We shouldn't forget that. Her official birthday. But in that yeah. case, I'm going to say thank a happy birthday again to Stara, whose official birthday. Oh, absolutely, yep. Today. Does anybody have anything else they would love to recommend for the week ahead? In that case, bear with me one second while my iPad takes my fingerprint. So finally for today, Crinkle Crankle by Hans Klammer, which is... Well, I'll read you what they say. As part of Architecture Fringe 2021, we take a sustainable 90% recycled brick and the circular economy of utilising waste and recycled materials to generate a musical score, installation and film piece. And that's being performed next Wednesday from 8 o'clock till 10 o'clock it just seemed to me to incorporate all of the things we're interested in music film recycling sound and very very odd imaginative projects so we're looking forward already to next week on monday we have our photographers and filmmakers club 
Again, that's on Zoom from 11 to 12. At the moment, the club is being led by Hazel Brill. She's an emerging international artist and also works part-time leading our youth programme. So if you're interested in joining that, drop us a line, info at together2012.org.uk. And we'll send you the link and Noel Guinan, our engagement support worker, will be in touch. We're back next Friday afternoon. But of course, before then, right through the week, we've got the Make and Natter session on Tuesday with the Art Club, Pop-Up Poetry Club on Wednesday. On the Friday, we've got the Still Life session with the Art Club. And Hazel also has a whole raft of social media-based projects for people under the age of 25 and is also running the Arts Award. So again, you can contact us, info at together2012.org.uk. And don't forget our highlights and links page under the main Together 2012 TV page on our website, where we'll have all of the links, videos, photos and poems from today. So, Robin, do you want to introduce our final item? Indeed. So to close today, we have um, an interview followed by a song um, from a, a, a very well-known um, disability activist called Dennis Queen. Um, she uh it's particularly relevant that being that it's pride month as well because it's uh not only does she campaign on disability but pride issues as well um and i think really i just need to say please enjoy dennis queen thank you robin so have a great weekend everybody and we'll look forward to seeing you next week so together tv watchers this afternoon we're having a great interview with dennis queen so over to you. Please introduce yourself. Hi. Hi. I'm Dennis Queen. I'm based in Manchester in the northwest of England. Um, I am genderqueer. I'm disabled as well. And uh, I'm a disability rights activist and also a musician. And also I have a, a lovely big queer family. So you describe yourself as genderqueer and a yeah. songwriter. Would you like to just, in a nutshell, tell viewers what that means? Oh, which bit? The genderqueer bit? Both. Bit both. Um, yeah, so I'm transgender. Not everybody who's non-binary is transgender, but I'm genderqueer, which means I don't really, I don't identify as a man or a woman, really. I just see myself as a person. Um, and so I've been sort of living as an out transgender person now for 10 11 years maybe and that feeds m the music stuff that I do it's it's not um much in that but I'm starting to put more of uh, LGBT related stuff in um as I move forward I've tended to stick to disability rights because uh that's the community that I'm used to performing in so yeah Obviously, I've known you for a long time as a musician, um, shared stages, shared CDs. Um, what inspires you to write? Um, uh, mainly, I think, other activists and situations. So um, sometimes it might be a protest we've been on that I think is a good story, or it might be a campaign that we're doing or an experience that I've had or that somebody else has had. Sometimes it, I think it really, I think sometimes it's a kind of therapeutic thing, you know, writing down some of the strange things that happen and looking at them through art um, is really helpful on a personal level for me. And, but um, also because I know that uh, we gain a lot of support and solidarity from sharing stories with each other, especially our collective stories. And I sort of see that as part of our job as musicians in a um, in an activism movement is to uh, kind of reflect what's going on for the community and uh, help boost morale, I guess. So, and that's really important to me. So, yeah, usually it's it's, it's other activists that inspire me. So, those of us that know you know that you're a guitar player. But yeah. how do you go about writing one of your songs? I guess I, I tend to fiddle around with ideas and 
out of that build little chord sequences but usually things come kind of together so in my head there might be key phrases or things I'm thinking about or that people are talking about that start to make a shape in my head of a sound and then I try and make that sound into it but also I'm not like the world's most skilled guitar player so that that leaves me slightly limited to some extent and I think for me the big challenge has been trying to write music that's simple um, that is easy to listen to and clear to hear. I think about how the British Sign Language translation is going to look and that stuff shows other disabled people appreciate that and that's really nice. Recently, one of the things that made me really happy was that um, after a a gig a year or so ago where I'd put a lot of thought into how I expressed things so that they would look good in sign language, um, but I got a nice compliment from someone who's deaf about the songs, which I think is wonderful that's kind of so it's a bit of a process so as I'm thinking about the shape of the sound and the idea and the music and then I'm thinking about I'm very very nitpicky about exact words and also uh, I do sound a bit posh when I sing people mistake my accent for a uh, a middle class southern accent actually my dad's a squaddy it's an army accent so it's not posh it's just not recognized by others but one thing that's important to me as well is when I sing I try and articulate really clearly because I'm aware people are lip reading in the audience I'm aware people are trying to make out different sounds from what you're saying and so all of that's quite important to me yeah well sadly I'm afraid we only have a couple of minutes for this interview I think maybe We'll come back and do a much longer one at some point in the future. Um, But with all you've said in mind, would you like to introduce the video that we're going to play next? Yeah, um, I'm really glad to introduce this to you and for some new people to hear it. It's something that I put together towards the end of last year. So during that first year of the coronavirus pandemic in 2020. And I wanted to write something that people would feel spoke to them in that moment then as we were in the movement we're facing a lot of challenges a lot of carnage Um, we were all many of us have been shielding I've been shielding for over a year Um, uh, and so I I wanted to bring in those themes without writing something depressing (laughs) and so I focused on like what I thought people needed to feel at the moment. And and I think the most important thing at the moment is supporting each other through these times. And so it's written with that idea in mind and um, the things we're experiencing during coronavirus and also looking at working in more intersectional ways. So talking about finding everyone that isn't with us already that we need to reach. So yeah, it was quite a few themes in there and I hope, hope you like it. It's called For Justice With Love. Thank you so much. Once 
once again are becoming so rough. These social distances feel pretty tough. The carnage our people face is more than enough. But we'll rise again soon for justice with love. Remember activists gone before us, the powerful traditions entrusted to us. Tell radical stories so no knowledge is lost. Our emancipation is waiting for us. All now, all together, find those who are missing so that we may grow. Even now, it's just the beginning. So far, but there's further to go. All now, pull together, find those who are missing so that we may grow. Even now, it's just the beginning.